Today on Daybreak Extra, we are looking at the impact of incessant abduction of children on psychology. And we have in the studio with us a personal development and mental health expert, Coach Didi. She also works with uh, preteens, teenagers and adults. Good morning and welcome to Daybreak Extra. Good morning. All right. So uh, first of all, before we go into, you know, the main questions, uh, let's uh, tell us a, a, a back, give us a background of what you actually do and what your experience is like. Well, like you said, I'm a personal development as well as a mental health coach. Uh, I'm a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. It's actually called the psychology of excellence. Okay. It's basically about your thoughts, your words and your actions okay. and how they come together and make who you are because your thoughts manifest in your words and your words manifest in your actions. I'm also a coach in, in cognitive behavioral therapy. Basically how you turn things that happen to you, rewire your thinking. Whatever is happening to you, you can actually change the way you react towards it mm. by changing the way you think about it because most people who focus on what's wrong with their lives are miserable. And when you think about what's right with your life, they're a little happier. Okay. And I work with women and children and I actually consult for schools on uh, issues of, of emotional intelligence, mental health, uh, anger management, stress management, and the likes. Okay, so uh, what impact does kidnapping on children actually have on them, the parents, and also society? Well, the thing about um, trauma, because kidnapping is traumatic for everyone involved. Mm. Now, the child, for example, now it's not a one size fits all mm -hmm. because it depends on what actually happens mm. to the child and the age of the child when the kidnapping happens. Mm. Trauma is basically called injury to the mind. Okay. When something goes wrong with the way you think. Mm. Now, for example, if you have, you have a plain sheet of paper and you write something on it and you clean it, does it become exactly the same as it was? No. So it leaves a scar. Mm. Now, in psychology, there's this thing called ACEs adverse childhood experiences. Okay. Whatever happens to you, not just happens to you in your mind, even though it happened yesterday, day before yesterday, a year, 10 years, 15, 20 years, it still leaves a mark because it changes the way you think. Mm. It changes the way you react to things. Now, for example, I keep telling people, if a child who has been traumatized, sexually abused or physically abused in this case, mm. you come and give him a high five, now, mm -hmm. how he reacts depends on his map mm -hmm. of the world. If when an adult raises his hand, he gets bitten, he will duck. He's afraid. Now, another child, same age, when you raise up your hand, he'll give you a high five. Because mm -hmm. in his society, in his home, or in his environment, when you raise a hand, it's just to say hello. Mm -hmm. So the thing about trauma is it keeps count. And it moves from just a traumatic experience in your head to your body. In the sense that, can I give an example? Yes, go ahead. You know Joss? Yes. You know that this place called the forest in Joss. Now, let's imagine for a minute, you just close your eyes and you find yourself inside the forest. Just like that. You mm. are sitting right here and then you find yourself in the forest. Mm. Now, of course, you'll be shocked. And then, as you're trying to imagine, find out what's really happening, you raise up your head and you see a hungry looking lion. Now, the mind is built to do three things fight, mm. flight, mm. freeze, and sometimes people say fawn. All right, can you explain, you know, these now, like Fs? I said, so you just see, find yourself in the forest and you see a hungry looking lion, of course you know what's coming. Mm. Now, automatically, your body will respond. Either you fight, and fight here, you know you can't fight a lion mm. because you don't have anything, but you can even pick up a stick just to defend yourself because you just feel, do something. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the, flight, uh, the fight mode. Okay. Then the flight mode is, immediately you see the lion, you feel, Run for it. Mm. You know you can't, uh, you can't outrun the lion, but you try. And then the third one is the freeze mode, and you are just frozen. in shock. You don't know what mm. to do, and you just, just kill me, finish. <laughs> you know? Mm. And the fun is when you try to maneuver yourself, your way out of the problem. No, in this case, you know, I don't think fun can come in because mm. how do you maneuver a lion? Mm. But you can even try because if that is what comes to your head, you will try. Maybe mm. you can imagine it's a dog and you try to pet Maybe, it or something yeah. and so that it can let you go. But the thing is, the human mind is built in a way that whenever you find yourself in a threatened position, you do something. Either you freeze, you fight, you flight, or you fawn. Mm. Now, in the case of children, mm. now how does it affect the body? A child thinks, this is an example, a child gets abducted 
and is sexually abused. Because from the studies, unfortunately, we don't have much data in Nigeria, but from studies with data in the US, most of the victims are sexually assaulted. 50% of them are sexually assaulted. Now, this child gets sexually assaulted, unless it happens every time, every night at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Naturally, by the time it's 7 p.m., the child's heart will begin to beat faster. For example, back to the forest. When you find yourself in the forest and you see that hungry lion, your body will react. You may begin to sweat. Your heart will begin to beat faster. Maybe if perhaps it was just dap, 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 dap. Mm. Now it becomes da, 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 da. Mm. You, your body will shake. So everybody reacts differently, but these are the basic reactions. Now this child, every night, at 7 p.m., before 8 or 9 p.m., when he knows this act happens, his heart will begin to beat faster. His body will begin to shake. Now, the way God has made it is there's a way that your heart is supposed to beat normally. Mm -hmm. Now, when you find yourself in a situation whereby you feel threatened, it's okay. For example, the lion again. If the lion is going to eat you, how many minutes will it take for you to, 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 you know, to get eaten? So your heart will beat faster for just a couple of minutes, mm. 10, 15 minutes, and it's okay. It's done. But in, in the situation whereby this child is being sexually assaulted mm. or physically abused, mm. It's something that goes on for a long period of time. Mm. So when the heart doesn't beat tap, 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 it now beats da, 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 da for one hour, two, even before the act, yeah. it affects the physiology of the child. True. So you cannot compare a child who has never gone through what this child is going through mm. and this child. So the development of this child is different from the other one. Mm. Now, this also brings in stress. Now, it's proven that most mental health illnesses stem from stress and chronic stress. Mm. When this child is stressed, his heart will beat faster. It will pump blood more and faster than it's ordinarily supposed to do, and it will weaken his heart. So a child like that can grow up to have heart conditions. And then in the case of so many other kinds of stress, headaches, sleeping problems, eating disorders, anxiety, Worry, because you cannot not worry if you, are, you find yourself in a situation like that. And then some other time, the child goes into depression. So basically, the psychological leads to Absolutely. the physical. Yes. Okay. The psychology yes. and the physical yeah. can come intertwined. Okay. All right. So but what, what can we do for children like this? They go through this kind of trauma, they come out. What can we do to help them? There's this uh, popular Jewish proverb that says, the heart gets broken. Mm. It can mend, but it leaves a scar. It always leave a scar and I think we have to be okay with that now our society we're not even used to therapy mm. we're not even used to counseling mm -hmm. exactly. most of the time when I hear about victims of this I used to wonder do, do they actually go for counseling do they actually speak to someone we are so shorted by the shame mm. village people matter what will people say mm. we're afraid to even speak up apart from those perhaps that have been made it to the media the rest nobody talks about them mm. because it will bring shame and that person is not allowed to even speak about it because you are already feeling shame for something you didn't do. And that is already traumatic. Now, what can we do? This is what we do all the time. Awareness. We have to create awareness. It is okay not to be okay. It is okay to tell people, I'm not doing okay today. There's this exercise I do for kids when I go to schools. I ask them, when was the last time you looked at your classmate and said, how are you? Hmm. I don't mean, how are you, and walk up past. No, really look at someone in the eyes and say, how are you? Do you know sometimes when you say that to someone, the person bursts into tears? Because they can't remember the last time somebody actually took notice or asked them how they're really doing. Now back to what we can do as a people, as parents. Now, there's this uh, clip I watched. There was a, I think it was an experiment about how kids get abducted. So. Mm. The man walked into walked to the park with a dog, a very cute puppy, and he saw a mother. He said, please, I'm doing, we're doing an experiment. This is my crew. Do you mind if we do it with your child? Have you told your child not to go with strangers? And mm. she said, of course. I always tell my child mm. never to go with a stranger. In fact, do not talk to a stranger. Mm. He said, okay, are you a game? Can we have an experiment? She said, sure. And she said, he asked, which one is your child? And she pointed. And he just walked to the child with the puppy. Hello. Mm -hmm. Do you like puppies? And, oh my God, I love puppies. And he started playing with the puppy. Would you like to see more puppies in my car? He said, sure. And he yes. held the child's hand. The mother was in shock. She couldn't believe it. And now that's what we all do. Don't talk to strangers. Mm. Don't go into anybody's car. Mm. We tell them all the time. But the thing is, it still does happen. Mm. Because the people who do this find ways to penetrate all the barriers we put. So I think it's not enough 
to teach our kids not to go with strangers, we also, we also need to put the mechanisms there, mm. the protections there, the barriers there. I use myself as, as an example. When my kids were growing up, not only did I tell them not to go with strangers, not to speak to strangers, but I also made sure the security man in my house, do not let them out of the house unless you get permission. Yeah. Because it can happen. With the, this day of uh, technology, mm. they meet someone online. My children are crazy gamers. They love PS4. Mm -hmm. They meet people online. I said, okay, let's meet up. Mm. They wouldn't tell their parents. So you have to put all the mechanisms. The main gate to the, uh, of our estate, I also told them, please, my kids cannot leave the estate mm. without an adult. So if you see them, send them back. So it's not enough to just tell them what to do and what not to do. You, al you also have to put things in place. Okay, so is it um, too early to teach kids self-defense? Because there's a video I saw, you know, uh, of a particular girl who her parents actually taught how to defend herself in case she was being kidnapped. I don't think it's too early for anything. If you have that option, I think you can. The thing is, we ha I keep saying it to most parents, we are raising sheltered children, honestly. Entitled and sheltered children who know nothing, apart from the video games, the Disney channels, the dog diaries, they listen to, they watch. We have to actually put scenarios for them to try to understand. Let me give you an example. I, I hope my kids are not watching this. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when I read a story online, mm -hmm. I make it relatable to them. And I go like, I sit them down. They were teenagers then. They are still teenagers. And I told them, do you know that there's something terrible really happened? I said, what? Right here in our area. I had that in uh, a few estates that a boy got missing and they, they can't find him. And eventually they were able to trace da 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 da. Mm. And, so, and the problem was when he left home, mm. he told his mom he was going to Wusetu and he, he left for Guarimpa. Mm. Mm. So when he was missing, they went to look for him at Wusetu because that was where he said he was going. Mm. So do you see? Do you see why I tell you all the time to please just say where you are going? Mm. So we have to do things like that. We cannot stop our kids from growing. We cannot stop them from having friends. And the thing is that this teenage thing, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> when it comes, you just have to find a way to live with it, but find a way to also communicate. Mm. Let them know that this is not just about me mm. trying to mother you all over the place. Mm. It's about you being safe. Mm. Let me know where you are going. So that if anything happens, God forbid, you know because I keep you. telling them, see, those kids you see missing, 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 when they woke up that morning, their parents didn't think they would get missing. Mm -hmm. So that's looking at um, the, the preventive side of things. So we actually started touching on, uh, on, on the aftermath, the, cre yeah. the, the curative side of it, you understand? Yeah. Um, and you said um, we started talking about what we can do as a people to actually help these kids that have been in captivity who escape, we give them opportunity to, to talk and express themselves and, and whatnot. What. But, can we be able to, to, to say that we have these mechanisms now in place that we can be able to, to, to reintegrate these children back? Can we, can we say that we have it in, in us now as a society? Honestly, I don't think we can say that. Mm. Because even as adults, we are still struggling for women to come out, men to come out to say they are not okay, they need counseling. Mm. Because there's so much stigma attached to it. Mm. We are a society whereby we keep judging people. We keep judging people and then it makes it worse. Because the victim is actually trying to recover mm. from what has happened to them and the people don't even make it any easier. Mm. We point fingers. Mm. They come along and if you're laughing, everybody keeps quiet. So mm. what do we do? Honestly, we have to make it okay not to be okay. Mm. I keep saying it all the time. Oh, it's okay not to be okay. And we have to be okay with that. Counseling is an option that most people don't even think about. Mm. Mm. What do we do? Back to what I'm saying, awareness. We have to just keep creating awareness. We go to schools and talk about mental health. We go to uh, uh, societies, villages. We go to communities. I work with an NGO called the Diamonds, and this is what we do. We go into remote parts of Abuja and talk to women about mental health because these are things that people just don't talk about. Mm. Women suffer from depression. So many women are suffering from depression and anxiety. And when you should, ah, Tachika, mm. she's too much. I beg, it's only you. Now only you come. You know, mm. this, are, and people are, people can be mean. Mm. Yeah. People can be mean. Okay, now, uh, in a situation where these kids actually bond with the kidnappers, yeah. how can this bond be severed? And what can one actually do in this scenario? It takes time. It takes time. That's why I keep telling people, you have to be patient. You see, when a person creates a similar, usually that, that usually happens with children. 
as they grow older because they've been there for years. So they create, it creates a bond, an unhealthy bond. You don't expect something that has happened over a long period of time and you just snap your fingers like Thanos. Have you watched Avengers? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and then it's all okay. It doesn't happen. It needs a lot of empathy mm. as well as patience. And this kind of person needs to go through therapy. Mm. Mm. And therapy is not a one-off thing. It's something that goes over a period of time because you cannot undo what has been done over a long period of time. Mm. It takes time. Have you worked with children who have been kidnapped? No, I haven't. You haven't? Okay. Now, um, because I wanted to ask, I know in most cases, you know, when people are kidnapped in uh, Nigeria and they're released, they just keep them for a few days, uh, at most a week. I don't know if there's any counseling that actually goes on while uh, they're being, you know, rehabilitated before they're brought back into society. I think for, I read in Bruno State, I think there's something like that going on. They do a little counseling. But, the thing but is, is that enough? Is, thank you. Now, that's not enough because it's not a one of, it's not a counseling session, one, two, three, four. No, you cannot change what happened over a long period of time with one, two, three sessions of counseling. It takes a long time. Mm. People go into therapy and counseling for years before they begin to even see results. But you know, we're a quick fix nation. Mm. Just do it and move on. But mm. it doesn't work like that because the mind doesn't work like that. It takes time. Okay. So what effect do you think um, our culture actually has on how we look at mental health because really um, just like you said we, we are afraid to talk about not being okay I mean it, uh, um, we, we were talking about um, domestic violence earlier and we were talking about how men who are being um, in an abusive relationship cannot come out and say that I am yeah. being abused by my wife yeah. you understand because it's an issue of machismo now yeah. you understand so how do you think our culture actually affects how we deal with mental health mental health because I feel as if why would I go to therapy? You know, therapy is, it's, it, I can't, I can't be, go and see a shrink because I'm supposed to be okay. Yeah. You know, I'm supposed to have this air of invincibility about me. So how does the culture actually really affect how we look at mental health generally? The culture, the culture is everything, honestly, because mm. our culture is how we were raised, is how we see things. But what can we do about it? We can create awareness. Mm. It still boils down to the awareness. When we keep talking about a forum like this, mm. we keep talking about it, it's okay. Mental, in fact, I have people that I, relatives who know what I do, and yet when I say, ah, oh, coach, you deal with her, mad people matter. Mm. Mm. And mental health isn't mad people matter. Mm. Because madness, psychosis, is just, an, it's a mental health disorder among so many. Do you know that excessive worry is a mental health issue? Excessive worry. Mm. And who is not worried? Everybody. Really, can you be in Nigeria right now and not worry? No, everybody. So we all have mental health mm. issues. Now, they are all, there are different types. When you cannot sleep, for a very long period of time is a mental health issue. Mm. When you cannot eat or you eat too much, mm. it's mental health. But people just think of mad people they see on the street. Mm. That's all mental health is And if about. a person is not ex uh, exhibiting uh, psychosis, that means a person is fine. Okay. That's fine. Or man, man up. Right? Exactly. Mm. exactly. And we live in a society whereby you're so, sabar, haoli, mm. haoli. It's always, ha, 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 ba. what is mm. it now? Everybody is patient. Why can't you, Why be, can't patient? you be patient? And yeah. because of that, people don't speak. I keep giving an example. There are times you hear about, and you know when suicide happens, nobody tells you suicide. Mm -hmm. You just go and greet the people, but nobody, except people who were there, because mm. again, stigma, mm. shame. Mm. And people who do commit suicide don't think about it in one day. It's usually a process, it's a long, because a few times, I, there was this example of a child, a teenager who committed suicide, and then his friends were shocked, because a day before he committed suicide, they said they were at his home, they played video game, they ate Indomie, so they cannot believe, how could he have done that? Mm. But the thing about it is, we always wear a face upon our face. Mm. You are miserable, you are unhappy, but when somebody comes, okay, hello, and mm. that's what mm. we all do. You are really, really miserable, but you can't let them see because village people, they will laugh. Mm. They will make fun. Mm. Let them laugh. Let them make fun. That is what we're trying to create. If you cannot make someone feel better, please work up us. Okay, now if you're to advise, how do you think these children can actually cope? What coping mechanisms can they use during captivity? Now, it boils down to what they were taught. Because if you have no idea, because most of them didn't even see it coming. Mm. For example, this little Hanifa, for God's sake, a five-year-old. Honestly, even I am perplexed. What will you teach mm. that? Except what most of the time we tell them is, scream but in her case how would she scream this is her guardian this is somebody she, she trusts mm -hmm. and most abductors come from that mm -hmm. angle mm -hmm. it's somebody you trust so you cannot even imagine that something is wrong so 
when you do find out it's, something is wrong, you're already in captivity. What we keep saying is, honestly, try to be alive. Just mm. try to stay alive. Sometimes, because you have to weigh it. That, but, but in the case, like I told you, with someone as young as Hanifa, honestly, I have no idea because mm. I don't work with some people that young. Okay. But for younger, uh, older kids, preteens and teenagers, we tell them, try to stay alive. How? Do as you're told. Mm. While you're doing what you're told, start to think. Notice your surrounding. Is, do you hear noises? If you can, which means perhaps there's a time or an opening that you can actually scream, someone can hear you. Mm. But of course, they are smarter as well. So they don't put them in a place whereby they can hear noises. But for example, look at the, in the case of Hanifa. She was actually taken to his home. Mm. Mm. Honestly. Okay, now what of uh, peculiar cases where uh, these kidnapped girls are raped? forcefully married you know some are pregnant and some have actually given birth how 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 easy or should i say how easy or how difficult is it for them to be rehabilitated and brought back into society we've had cases of them being rescued yeah it's not a one size fits all honestly because the thing about the mind is we're all different mm -hmm. we are all different so unless you have you do an assessment and see where the person is. You can't really say this is it for this person. But generally, you see, the thing about trauma is, it's right there. It's an injury in your mind that nobody can see. When I have a cut right now, you say, oh, Kochiji, sorry, what can we do? Can we, do we get mm. the first aid kit or something? Mm. Because you can see it. Mm. What about the injury right here? You cannot see it. I cannot explain it. Because even if I try, you wouldn't understand it. Mm. Now, they find themselves in this uh, position, not for one year two years, and like you said, they begin to some even form a bond. Mm. And sometimes there's this uh, coping mechanism that you try to forget. Your previous yes. life? Yes, yeah. Or you try to, f like, I am in here right now. I have to do the best I can to survive. Mm. So I will just go with the flow. Mm. And as you, everybody has a pattern. As you go, the subconscious, you begin to go with it, and then it begins to become your mm. new normal. Mm. So in the case whereby they come back to society, it all depends on, really, it all, it's not a one size. Mm. What, 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 have we, have, have there been cases where these, you know, uh, kidnapped people or children want to go back to their abductors? Well, like I told you, I haven't worked with any kidnapped victim, but mm. I do know that the bond you talked about, it's will real. Them so it will make back. them want to go back, mm. especially if they've been there for a very long mm. time and at a young age, mm. because that's all they okay. know. Mm. That, why, that is why I'm telling you, it takes time. Mm. It's something that has happened for so long, mm. for s such a long period of time. You cannot snap your finger and expect it to be undone. It takes time. So uh, mostly, usually when these things happen, we focus on, we, when we say the victim, yeah. your mind just goes straight to the abductee. Yeah. Mm. But the, the, the parents are also victims. Yes. The loved ones are victims. Yes. Um, their friends are victims as well. How, how, what can we do for them? in situations like this? Show support. Show support. And that's what we don't do. Mm. Back to our society. When something happens to someone, if you cannot make the person feel better, mm. please, this is a slogan I teach kids in school, mm. please work up us. They become the subject of gossip. Mm. But just like you said, people can be mean. People really can mm. be mean. And I think, that's why emotional intelligence is really comes in. Mm. What's emotional intelligence? When you begin, try to feel what others will feel. Put yourself, have empathy. Mm. Put yourself in their position. How would you feel? How would you want to be treated? Mm. Now treat them that way. So can we be said that we, 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 we live in a sadistic society? I wouldn't say that. Okay. We are made of, the society is made of so many people. Mm. Good people, bad people, average people. Because, for example, someone can meet you on a bad day and says, oh, that person is a really bad person. Mm. But he met you on a bad day. Mm. Someone else meets you on a good day, your normal day, and he says, oh, awesome guy. That's how it works. Mm. I don't think people are generally bad or mm. generally good. Sometimes we react to things that are happening to us in different ways. So I think it's more about what you think mm. for you and yourself and worry less about what other people think. Mm. Okay, now uh, you've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, do you have plans to actually, you know, uh, go further and uh, find ways of, uh, you know, personally speaking to uh, those who have been victims of kidnap? 
like I told you, our society, we are still not yet ready. You can go out to, uh, to them and ask them to come. Because, for example, the ones that are kids, mm. you need parental consent. Mm. And the parents want to wish it away. It has happened. We don't want to talk about it anymore. We there, don't... Isn't, isn't it possible for some to actually be ready? Yes, it's possible. But nobody has reached out. And you know about, okay, come, I can do this for you. You don't do that. Mm. Especially something really tricky like child abduction. Mm. We are all, it's always shrouded in secrecy. It's, do you know how many people have been kidnapped? Hmm. They don't talk about it. Very few actually come out and say, ah, it happened, and this is what happened. Nobody, because you want to wish it away. Hmm. You want, it, it, it never happened. It never happened, in, and even your family, they don't want to go back to that time, so nobody talks about it. But isn't there, a, isn't there a possibility that these people don't even know, you know, uh, about a child psychiatrist or something yeah. for them to even want to have one for their children? Isn't it possible? Yeah, it is. That that's the case. Yeah, it is possible. So it how do possible. you put yourself or how do others like you put themselves out there? Well, I think that's the struggle. That's what we're still trying to do. Create <laughs> awareness. It boils down to the same thing. Create awareness. Create awareness. Something like this on social media, on my handle, I think we all do that. There are so many coaches out there that are therapists and psychologists. Because in the case of people who come out from this kind of thing, kidnapping, abduction, they really do need to see a psychologist. Mm -hmm. All a right, so, so let's quickly digress, right? Uh, earlier we were talking about uh, domestic abuse okay. and uh, we couldn't uh, really picture you know what would lead a man to kill his wife or vice versa. Uh, what's your take on domestic abuse in general? Wow, domestic abuse. Well, see, you know, I told you something about ACEs. Yeah. Trauma. People act, feel, behave in a particular way from the experiences that have happened in their lives. Now, in NLP, that's something we say you are who you are based on three things your upbringing, your environment, and significant emotional events that have happened to you. That is going to govern how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. Yeah. I don't want to make excuses, but for most people who are violent, it didn't come from nowhere. Nobody is born violent. Sometimes it's from childhood. He saw his parents do the same. That's some, you see that the subconscious mind is very powerful. From most times you hear people, especially those who come from polygamous homes, whereby their mothers were mistreated. You hear when they were younger, they would say, I would never do this to my own wife. Mm -hmm. I and they end up doing the exact same thing. Same thing. That's the power of the subconscious mind. Your mind, your audio, this is what you saw your father do every day. So it's embedded it, here. It feels normal. It feels normal. So when you fight it, you try to fight, so you have to be really intentional and conscious of it for you not to do the same thing because it's a vicious circle. Mm. So I don't think people wake up in the morning. Now, this is my thought. Mm. I don't think somebody wakes up in the morning and decides, I'm going to do this. Usually there's a provocation. There's a trigger. And the thing, the power of the conscious, subconscious mind is already there. It always just needs a trigger. Mm. And then, that's why we keep telling people who have anger issues, go for anger management classes. Mm. Go for anger management classes. Well, there is help. How, yeah, effective, how effective is it? It is effective. I can give myself as an example. Mm. I was a really angry person. Hmm. Okay. And I had a coach and I went through anger therapy. It all depends on you, honestly. Mm. When you're ready, you make up your mind. You, there's this popular saying, that a journey of a thousand miles starts, starts with, with a, a, step. a step. Okay, now we don't say that in NLP. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a decision to mm. take that single step. Mm. Before you take the step, mm. you, you have, have to, to decide to take it. Mm -hmm. So if you make a decision today, this is not working for me. I need to do better. Mm. And you decide to take action. Then you're ready. That's why we don't force therapy. You cannot force counseling. You cannot force therapy because mm. the person has to be willing to do the work. So now let, let's look at coping mechanisms. You, you touched on something earlier when you said um, people try to wish these things, these traumatic mm. events away. Yeah. But don't you think that is an effective way to deal with it? I mean, like, if something happens to me and I decide to delete it from my memory mm -hmm. and forget it, skip that part of my life and then move on to the next, okay. if I forget it completely, don't you think that is an easy way for me to move on? Can you really forget it? Mm. Remember what I told you? Mm. It leaves scars. When you write on a piece of paper, mm. that paper can never, be ever brand. be the same mm. like a plain sheet of paper. Now you can wish it away, mm. you can try to forget it. Mm. There's always a trigger. You see people one, gradually sitting down one day and then they, they go berserk, mm. destroy things. Mm. They didn't plan it. Sometimes you keep bottling, 
bottling up, bottling up, and one day, one tiny thing, and they wonder, what happened? Is it this small thing? Mm. No, that it isn't the small thing. Mm. It's the small thing that triggered what mm. had already been there. So what the solution really is therapy. Mm. You cannot wish it away. It's because if you're lucky, it goes for a long period of time. Mm. But the thing about the trauma is it's right there. It's in there. And anything can trigger it. Why would you take the chance? So, but why, if, if I keep talking about it, yeah. and I keep telling somebody about it, like a therapist yeah. now, I keep talking about yeah. it, doesn't it, it, doesn't it um, ref, ref, refreshing it all the time? Doesn't it keep it fresh? No. Well, it depends. Like mm. I told I'm not a therapist. Okay. I'm a coach, but I've been taught uh, therapeutic tools using NLP. When you work with someone, you don't work, we say, what has happened has already happened. Mm. We don't focus on the past. Okay. We focus more on the future. It has already happened. So mm. we don't talk about what had happened. How can you move on? So you start to take steps. Step one, I'll do this. You get a little better. Step two, okay, I'll now move on to do that. On and on and on. So it's not talking about the past. Okay. It's learning from the past. We say, feel forward. Learn from what you've done wrong, or what has happened to you. I'm overhead. So we, we talked about um, how, how, how we treat mental health generally in Nigeria. How can we do better? generally now? How can we do better with mental health issues? How we deal with them personally and how we deal with them in others as well? Like I said earlier, it's basically accepting it. Mm. It's life. Not everything goes the way you want it to be. Mm. And it's okay. It's okay not to be okay. And then create awareness. Mm. And then it starts from me and you. Mm. When someone is in trouble, they're not doing so well. Instead of gossiping about them, making remarks about them that hurts even more, mm. ask them, show empathy. How are you doing? How can I help? How can I make it better for you? And if you cannot do that, please work our pass. Okay. So on a final note now, let's, let's, let, let, let's say I, I suddenly realize that, I'm, that I have some issues that I really need to work out. Yeah. Where do I go? Go on Google. <laughs> 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 you can call, ask mm. people who can help, seek help, mm. or you can call me. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, Coach Didi, thank you very much for coming on the show and talking about um, mental health issues and psychological effects of um, uh, kidnapping on, on young children and, of course, the society in general. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank program. you so much for coming. Thank you. All right. Thank you.